Hey, hey, Mario Genius here, and you're watching the review sanctum or everything and any game that you review. And yes, today we're talking about the brand new Tomb Raider movie based on the new rebooted Lara Croft for the newer games like Rise of the Tomb Raider. So keep in mind, this is the brand new realistically proportioned Lara Croft and not the super busted one from back in the day. Just keep that in mind, okay? And um, yeah, I'm going to try not to have too many spoilers. It's going to be hard to explain certain things without spoilers, but like, just be warned, potential spoilers, okay? So, um, the movie starts out with Lara Croft living her more or less normal life, so pretty action-packed for a normal life, trying to make ends meet. She's not quite the rich girl from the earlier, earlier movies or games just yet. She does have the big Croft um, family fortune waiting for her. She just signed the paper. The documents will officially declare that her dad is dead, and all the money goes to her. But the thing is, her dad did indeed vanish when she was a child. She went on some kind of some kind of mission. He never came back. But Lara Croft, of course, still has hope that he's out there somewhere, and she will find him someday. So she does not want to sign those papers. So Lara Croft finds his secret, I guess, underground bunker, basement, something that is all his adventures. Because I guess he was also a Tomb Raider back in the day that she never knew about. And she found like his uh, research about this dangerous death goddess called Himiko on this dangerous island that's off the map. And the thing is, she was so dangerous and the secret is so, so lethal that if it falls in the wrong hands, millions will die. And some bad guys are trying to get to it and he was trying to stop them from getting to it and of course he never came back. So Lara Croft now has to research and she now retraces his footsteps. She's got to find and survive the dangerous island. She has to find her father, find the secret and keep the bad guys because the bad guys are still there. She has to keep the bad guys from getting that dangerous secret. And yeah, basically the movie in a nutshell. So, um... Lara Croft herself, what can I say? Um, I kind of want to say, when I think about it, it's like she has the tools, but she hasn't used them in actual practice just yet. So basically speaking, yes, she's very brave. She's very courageous. She's very um, resourceful, adventurous. She's kind of stubborn, doesn't give up. She's very good at, you know, solving puzzles and stuff like that. And she has, like, training and self-defense and things like that. But she's never actually been in real life or death situations. So this movie actually thrusts her into the situation. And she's actually, I mean, something she does come off kind of like a scared girl. Because, yeah, she's never been in this kind of case. It's not the same um, training with arrows, bowling arrows with your dad in the, like, the fields or something, as opposed to having them with bad guys, and they all got guns, and you can't really afford to miss, and stuff like that, and, um, yeah, it's kind of like you're training martial arts in the dojo all your life, but now, you're actually surrounded by people that got knives and guns on you, and your life's on the line, you know, it's very different from just a tournament or something, so anyways, um, Lara Croft, um, like I said, she does come off as scared. Um, people might say she's a bit weak in some scenes, but again, she's still getting into the role. Her life is on the line. She's doing all kinds of dangerous, defying stunts and things like that. Basically, acts of desperation to survive during this adventure. So it's pretty intense. And um, people might complain that, uh, like based on the trailers, that lots of the scenes look a lot like the cutscenes in the game. Like, hey, might as well just stay home, play the game, watch all the cutscenes. There's the movie. But no, still very different. It still has different situations. Um, some of these are kind of similar here and there because, I mean, it's just based on the game. You have to kind of get some things from the game, you know. So, it does have some elements from the first reboot Lara Croft game where um, she got shipwrecked and she got surviving the island. You get a little bit of that. And, of course, she does have the bow and arrows like the games nowadays. She's known more for arrows than her guns. And, um, and I have to be honest, even my friend and I kind of joked when she had her arrows. We were kind of joking like, oh, crap, crap, grab, grab, you know, grab the controller, grab the controller. Hold on, there's the bad guy. We were kind of joking because it did kind of look... Very similar to those scenes where Lara Croft is trying, like, hiding from bad guys and having her arrows and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it's still very different. I still think it's still kind of worth watching and everything. The situation is still kind of different. Uh, there's a case, I don't know if this is ever in the game or not. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. You might say, but Mark, that was in that certain game, you know, but I don't know. But there was a scene where she was on this giant, uh, well, you know, on this airplane and the wings were kind of held up by these uh, giant stone pillars, and there was a real, like a real deadly drop, like a waterfall, you know, the size of the Grand Canyon, you know, you fall, you die kind of situation, and she's on the plane, 
and the plane's like like rusty, it's all hell from years of misuse or whatever, and you know, the elements or whatever, and it's like falling apart and snapping apart, the wings are snapping off, and she has to, to run and jump on it, she gets in the plane, and then the plane starts collapsing and falling apart from the inside, and she's doing all these like, like things to try to survive, like you can see the wheels in her head spinning as to what to do, how to survive the situation, and just that whole scene was super intense, like reading edge of your seat, that was pretty good, and everything, and um, yeah, you do have to, the similar things, a lot of these kind of like um, treasure hunt movies, they do eventually end in the, in the temples and stuff, exploring, of course, there's always bad guys there at gunpoint, like, I don't know why there's never a situation like a movie like, like National Treasure or Indiana Jones or something, where they're just going there to find an artifact without bad guys forcing them with guns and stuff, right, there's always got to be a bad guy in there, instead of the adventure itself just being perilous on its own, you know? But, um, yeah, so it's kind of similar. She doesn't go underground the temple and solve these dangerous puzzles. Like, some of them are kind of based on the game, I think. They're kind of similar to the games, previous game puzzles, with the bad guys at gunpoint. Um, the main bad guy is very annoying and very despicable. He's just, he's just a dick. Like, you kind of sort of get the idea some of the guys are just hired help, so they're doing their job, but, but the main bad guy, he's just a fucking asshole. He's just an asshole, and, um, like, the kind of character you really want to see him get what's coming to him. So, yeah, you kind of get that in the movie. And let me see what else I want to say. Um, one thing I want to say is, of course, the complaint. Um, the moment they started announcing, like, she's going to be there at Croft, but she's too skinny, look at her, she's, she's flat-chested, or, or, here scenes of her as Lara Croft, like, she will appear in the movie, what, where are her boobs at, and all that, so that's the thing, you show the trailer, it doesn't look like her, so, all these people, a lot of negative backlash online, social media, whatever, have been complaining about her not looking like the busty Lara Croft of back then, but again, guys, this is the reboot version, I don't know if you guys want to play, like, maybe just the first game, or saw the old movies, or just saw pictures and never really like play the games or whatever but but this is based on the newer games on these newer generation consoles that have come out so again your arguments are completely invalid we're talking about the wrong letter croft it's almost like watching a brand new batman movie and complaining that he doesn't do the batuzi because you're talking about the wrong batman you know so um yeah and the last thing i do want to say about the movie uh let me see here yeah i do have some complaints here and there uh one complaint i do have is whenever she was on the boat and the uh, you know it got stormy as all hell and dangerous you know rapids are smashing against rocks there's there's thunder and lightning it's all happening so fast like oh god like I don't know too much too much lightning too much flash 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 too much shit going on too much camera angles it was it was like making me almost seasick like I don't know it's like I'm glad we didn't go to get the 3D glasses for that one because that that probably would have really made me seasick. It's like, I don't know, I, really, I don't really get affected by all the flashing lights and colors, but that scene was just awful, man. I was like, like I was glad it ended because I couldn't take much more of that. And, um, yeah, some parts, like, it's understandable because a lot of the movie takes place either at night or deep underground where it makes sense for it to be dark, but it gotta do something. I don't know. There, there's, like, some scenes where you can't really see what the hell's going on because it's so fucking dark, like, like that boat scene. And there's a scene that Lara Croft was escaping a bad guy in a temple somewhere, and... I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know what the fuck she did. She did something to escape. What did she do? I don't know. It was too dark and the camera was flashing all over the place and I couldn't tell what happened there. But, um, yeah, some parts were a bit too dark and I do understand it makes sense, but they gotta do something with the camera or something so we can see what the hell is going on, you know? Especially if it's like a pivotal point, like how will Eric escape this? She escaped it because it's dark, you know? I, I don't know. Those are my only little complaints. Um, another thing I want to say about the movie is that the movie is pretty good. It's worth checking out. Um, I would say go see it. If you're a fan of Lara Croft, if you're a fan of the newer games, or have an open mind, this is not the Lara you're used to from the 90s or whatever. I think it was the 90s, late 90s, something like that. So, um, yeah, just watch the movie. It's pretty cool. I hope the movie has a lot of success. I hope the movie um, breaks the video game curse, because I guess... Assassin's Creed didn't do that well in the box office. They may not make a sequel after all, but I hope this one has a sequel because the thing is, this movie really does open itself up to a sequel without too many spoilers. Um, how can I phrase this? Um, let's just say that Lara, Lara, whatever, has like a, like a bigger problem. There's like a bigger problem here, and this movie, they kind of sort of just scratched the surface, 
and the ending kind of opens her eyes and there's like a like a bigger thing out there that just has to be expanded on in sequels do not let this end here you know it's you know it's almost like Superman fighting Darkseid and Darkseid saying I'll be back and there's no sequel or something like that you know it's like you can't really let this end here I really hope there's a sequel I really want to see how it expands and how Lara Croft becomes the Lara Croft that we are more familiar with and how she handles this this dangerous um, menace I'll say that dangerous menace that's um, coming over so anyways guys I'm Mark Rodriguez here and this has been the review sanctum where everything and anything may be reviewed and I do want to say that um, I did recently buy the uh, Vines of Freddy's, the Twisted Ones, I finally found a copy in an actual bookstore. So, um, whenever I'm done reading that hundred or so pages, I'll, I'll review it here. And also, um, Dragon Ball Super is about to end, so whenever it ends, I'll review the series as a whole. I'll try to review the series, like, I, I know I'm going to be tempted to talk a lot about Torment of Power and Ultra Instinct and stuff. I'm going to try hard to, to focus like on the entire series overall to get my review or something like that. And also, uh, please keep an eye out for the brand new fan page. I did a brand new VGM fan page. It's, I'll put the link below so you can check it out. It's also on the channel. I changed the link and everything so you can check out the brand new fan page. And yes, the uh, Epic Blog of Randomness is coming back. I'm starting to do more articles every weekend at least. You can expect at least one or two articles every weekend. So, yeah, I'm going to try to keep all that stuff going. And, of course, more video game match episodes to come. So, anyways, guys, Mario Rodriguez is here. And see you to the next movie. Probably Infinity Wars. Because that's going to be fucking awesome.